Hello, I'm Merit Sukovich, Chief of the Department of Neurology at Mass General Hospital and the Director of the Sean M. Healy and AMG Center for ALS at Mass General. I'm also the Julianne Dorn Professor of Neurology at Harvard Medical School. I'm here today to uh, talk about how gene therapies are changing neurological disorders and using examples from motor neuron disease. So ALS is one of the worst uh, neurological illnesses. It stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. This is a neurodegenerative disease that affects people in the prime of their life. Typically thought of as a rare disease, it really is not a rare disease. The lifetime risk for men is one in 300, and for women, one in 400. And because the illness uh, increases in incidence as people age, and the population is aging, it is predicted that the number of people with ALS living all over the world will increase by about 70% in the next decade. This illness can strike people at any age, from people in their 20s, even teenagers, to people up in their 90s, though the average is in the mid 50s. It is uniformly fatal. Most people succumb from this illness at three years, though some people can live um, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, and some people have a super rapid form of less than six months. Most of the people who get ALS do not have this in their family. However, there are about 10% of people where it is familial, and we've learned a lot about the genes and the gene mutations that cause the familial form and how that informs also for the sporadic form of the illness. The science behind ALS has just exploded in the last couple of years, and we know more about the targets and there are many trials going on all over the world. There's more than 160 pharma companies in the ALS space, and that gives hope uh, that we're going to find effective treatments for people with ALS. We do have some challenges, however. Uh, we're diagnosing people late. From the time they have their first symptom to when they're told the diagnosis, about a year has passed on average. And that means for about a third of people's illness, they're not diagnosed, and that means we can't intervene. So a big push to try to get earlier diagnosis so we can intervene earlier. There's also a very active community, and this is good news. This is a community that is uh, pushing for speed, for more access to options, for treatments, and for uh, us to really break down some of the barriers that slow down clinical trial uh, development. Uh, the, the patients with ALS today are really compared to the activists in the 80s of, uh, from the HIV community, and they're making a difference. So one of the biggest challenges we have to getting effective treatments for people with ALS is that disease heterogeneity. As I mentioned, some people can have the illness less than six months and others uh, have it for 10 or 20 years. And that makes uh, very uh, difficult to develop new treatments for people with ALS. We do think that there's some biological differences and if we could understand those, then we could target treatments more specifically to people with a, a particular biology. And uh, nowhere have we learned this more than in the genetic forms of the illness where we now have trials of gene therapies just for the, the people who have the two most common genetic forms of ALS called SOD1 and C9. But we're also developing trials that can target different biologies in the sporadic form. And we're getting smarter and smarter about how to do that, but we need to develop those tools and technologies to do this even better. One of the, the most exciting advance, advancements in the field of ALS is the gene therapy for the genetic form. Um, the, the leading candidate right now is a drug called tofersin that is an antisense oligonucleotide against SOD1. This was the first gene found in, uh, that causes about 2% uh, of um, the cases of people with ALS. The phase one, two study of tofersin in ALS, uh, the results are shown here on the graph. Um, it it uh, showed many important things. One, it was safe. Two, that it lowered the SOD1 protein, so it hit its target. And three, that um, uh, shown here on the right, that uh, even in the small number of participants, you can see that in orange, the group on drug at the high dose did not change in their progression over uh, 90 days approximately, whereas the people in blue uh, on, who were on placebo shown here declined uh, as expected in a very rapid way. So this study uh, was immediately amended to go into a phase three trial. Those results are expected this fall. However, 
Um, this was just the beginning of how to use gene therapies for people with ALS. There's now trials of uh, also antisense oligonucleotide approaches for a different gene called FUS. This is a rapid uh, uh, fatal form of ALS that often uh, strikes uh, teenagers. Uh, also, an ASO trial is underway uh, for the most common genetic form called C9ORF72 that causes ALS and frontal temporal dementia. And even more exciting is that this technology to lower genes or lower proteins is also being used now for the sporadic form of the illness, with the first trial started in sporadic ALS with a gene therapy approach uh, with a product, an antisense oligo that lowers a protein called ataxin 2. And there's many, many more. So the ability to downregulate or upregulate and proteins of interest um, is um, transformational in neurology and in particular in ALS. The other thing that we've uh, been doing in ALS is uh, really listening to that patient voice about really a demand for speed and efficiency. And so we've brought some uh, major innovations from oncology to the ALS world. And we launched last July from the Healy Center at Mass General, the first platform trial in ALS. This is an approach that cuts the time to drug development in half, cuts the cost of developing drugs by a third, and greatly increases the percent of people on active drug. And so we've set this uh, design up so that we're testing actually four drugs now. We share the placebo. Each participant participant gets access to one drug, um, and we can get answers instead of one drug at the end of a trial to four or five. And when we have new drugs, we can amend the protocol and add. This brings tremendous efficiency, and we're very excited that we're already enrolling. Over 500 people have uh, uh, participated already in this study despite the pandemic. There's huge interest. This trial is enrolling uh, three to four times faster than any previous ALS trial. We will have the results of the first four treatments in this platform trial by the first quarter of 2022. Uh, so really exciting, and we already have uh, two more companies that will join the platform trial in the fall, and we've spoken to over 57 companies in ALS interested in partnering with us on this new innovative way to accelerate treatments for people with ALS. So we're in an amazing time in the field, and we can envision a future where we can halt ALS biology, we can halt this illness, and then we can think about how we're going to prevent this disease in the first place. So at Mass General, we have established um, uh, one of the leading ALS centers in the world. And this center wants to help cure ALS as well as other rare and not rare neurological diseases and to work in partnership with industry and with our patients on how we can do this better and faster. The antisense oligo uh, uh, approach is one powerful approach to modulate uh, proteins of interest whether that's going to be to downregulate or upregulate. We've been able to show in ALS and really pioneers here that you can do this safely. You can deliver these in the spinal fluid. You can get them into the motor neurons. And you can do this in both the genetic forms of the illness as well as the sporadic. Much more, of course, to do to optimize delivery and keep going, uh, getting better targets. But this is here, and it's uh, here to stay. We're also working about how do we uh, stop progression the, even thinking about the word stopping progression wasn't possible uh, a year or two ago, but now it's in our vocabulary. And we're really leveraging the great neurological uh, scientific expertise at Mass General and the global collaborations we've formed through our trial networks to bring the best treatments forward to patients through efficient platform trials, as well as other early phase trials. We've also heard the patient uh, community voice that they want to be in trials, but often they're excluded for a variety of reasons. Perhaps they've had the illness too long or they're too sick. They still want to contribute. And so we are helping um, our patients as well as helping companies think through how do you provide ethical access to experimental treatment and expanded access programs to people who might not be eligible for trials. Very important to do in a fatal illness. And lastly, we've already moved into that last phase of how do we prevent onset by studying people at risk for ALS who carry the genes and actually starting the first prevention trial with Tofersen uh, with our colleagues. So this is the future and very exciting and very hopeful that we can come to a day where people don't get ALS or if you do have it, that we can actually treat it and stop it. Thank you.